the morning after the 53 pound six ounce mirror looking out across the swim facing down to the bridge in the distance down there just reposition the baits for the day so hopefully I don't take around about oh, half five five half five so we'll uh, see what happens uh, today bad news lost one in the night um, real quick take couple of bleeps it's proper going as soon as we got in the boat pulled out of it so that's the first one we've lost Matt had another one um, didn't weigh about 29 to 31 pound mirror done a couple of night shots uh, geese this morning next door he had a 60 62 pound mirror that was a beast of a fish a um, couple of rods what I'd got left but I had loads of liners on them um, and then through the night they were bleeping and that one of them got a roach on when I reeled in in the morning god knows how it got that hook inside its gob um, and the other one had been totally wrapped up by crayfish so I sort of said to Matt this time any amount of like savage liners and it keeps going on say for a couple of hours I'm just going to like redo the rod because can't be leaving the rods out and they're going to get zapped like that I mean couldn't even couldn't salvage much just had to cut it off I proper knitted it up so as you can see uh, it's a hell of a lot hotter today I've, I've had to put the suntan uh, cream on it's got down here in torrential rain like I said yesterday was dull well it was a bit sunny in the morning then it went dull a lot more wind today it just seems to be that lot more brighter fish were definitely like out and about in the main body here uh, the bloke opposite uh, he had one while the pictures of that 62 were being taken so bat has got two rods he's going to get another one out in a minute he's just going to get some uh, provisions and then what I'm going to do sometime today I'm going to uh, let him run through what he actually does the packages down here so there's a lot there's a lot of ways you you know uh, it caters for sort of like different people the best way is definitely flying I mean you know you don't even have to you don't even have to bring it you can rent the gear you don't even have to have him as a guide he'll pick you up give you the boat rods everything you want and off you go you know off you go for a week two weeks whatever anyway I'll let him like talk to you about that a bit later on but as you can imagine uh, I was buzzing after that big and hell of a boat battle it was mental it was like the power of it on the surface right yeah it was just reminding me when I was playing the Black Mirror like back home in England big boat battle um, it was just like mental and uh, tugged around a little bit probably fought a bit harder to be honest not harder, longer, definitely longer. They're just like, well, powerhouses over here. I think I might be coming back here probably in about December time um, for a week, 10 days, just give it a go again. I like the fish when it's cold and they're all back up in weight. But I don't think a lot of these fish have spawned yet because uh, that, that one I had hadn't spawned and that 62 hadn't spawned either. And they're definitely on the munch now. Water's dropping fast, if you can see, look. Originally the water was past the butts and then like since yesterday, but it's like out here now. So I, re I reckon within another couple of days I'll be able to move the rods a lot further out into the pond. Here's just like a little view of the lake. Boats here ready to rock. There's another one around the corner. That's in there with a couple of rods. You can see the other boat just tucked in there. And there's the setup, bivvies, everything's there. That's the kitchen. <laughs> Solar panels are like doing the batteries. So you hook them up and get them like charged up. As you can see, everything's like professionally done here. In the day you have a few people riding on the boat sometimes. Pike season opened, I think it was yesterday, so it's a little bit busy with them about, but I, th I didn't think I was going to get a bite much before, well, 11, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock at night, so it was a bit ridiculous when I had that bite at half past five in the evening. So, there was a lot of fish out here last night, sat here watching them topping, like right over, right over the numbers. So what we've done today, um, we've left the marker out and we're going to put a marker like 20 foot or so behind it. Because we've like we've crammed three rods on this zone, 
it seems to be like the hot zone at the moment in this swim and uh, that means like we can get the rods easily back at night without like crossing the other lines because we're probably squeezing sort of three rods in in about sort of 30 yards 35 yards of water so as you can imagine uh, you don't want to be like crossing the other lines you want to like be able to pinpoint everything sweet so just go out there with the echo get the, the depth we're fishing in the water's dropping now so we're that's gone down a foot already in a day, down a bit. Um, 19 foot, so now like sort of 18, just under 18 foot. So I did have a rod last night out towards that boy there. Sorry about that, cut out. Um, I did have one out towards that boy. I mean, to the right is the nature reserve where it's shut at the moment. It does open for carp fishing and night fishing later on in the year. Sort of, had a, um, not right on it, probably, but just over halfway towards it. Had a rod in 27 foot, but nothing happened out there. It's nice to keep one moving around. That rod now is a lot, lot a lot closer in. Probably, I think we worked that one out. It's about 12 to 13. I've gone down two shelves and found a nice soft bit there, just running out like in the boundary allowed to fish to, because I was getting a hell of a lot of line as there's loads of fish were moving through last night. But tonight we're definitely going to be like uh, not messing around. Rigs are already tied up. So that means uh, tonight, tonight all I'll be doing is um, just before dark tying the baits on and then away you go. I know it's a bit noisy at the moment, but it's part and parcel. It's their life anyway, you know. I think it like stirs it all up. And now the pike season's open, you've got more, got boats going down into the reserve and that's spooking them down there. And we've got a nice like ripple running down here at the moment. I'm sure this is all uh, adding to the flavour. And as they run out from to the right there, they hit this like shallow bit here. And it's, of course there's baits here. But last night they ran round to there as well. Geese away to the left. He had that 62. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the sun a little bit and um, we'll talk a little bit more what we're doing and what Matt, Matt's doing business-wise later on. Moody conditions coming down through the valley. Over there. Might just miss us, I think it might. Wind's got up, changed direction now. It's pumping more in and through the reserve, basically how it was when I got here. Been here two days now and I'm like so knackered. I've had to have a, like a massive sleep. Just like sleep deprivation. Head was just like feeling like it was going to explode. So I get my head down for a couple of hours. And then Matt, I've named him like Faffer too. Um, what I mean by that, he's always faffing around. Oh Christ, like I'm sleeping like he's. I hear a bottle go and it's like, Christ, give it a break. He just can't sit still. He's unbelievable. So I'm hoping I'm going to nail him down tonight. Like I said, no late. I've told him no later than tomorrow and he's got to talk. So <laughs> he might be frightened of the camera. He won't be by the time I'm finished with him anyway. Look at it out there. It's great, isn't it? Rod tips high, of course. Rod tips high of course, takes in here are like mostly rippers, you might get a couple of bleeps like that big and I had last night, that was about this time, 20 minutes ago, a um, few bleeps and then I ran down and it was just, the rod was bending down, just about to melt, I bet you, well I know, that one right yeah he'd, uh, he ain't dealt with a sticky sharp hook before because he was shaking his head. So he's one that goes around sort of like, a lot of the time if he picks up, well, as far as I'm concerned, if he picks up something that's a bit iffy, rig wise, he's shaking his head and that's what that was. And he couldn't deal with that super sharp hook. So uh, he got nailed. We do a bit about rigs and bait presentations, what I'm doing. Everyone knows I'm using sticky baits and that, but I'm doing a few things different to what I'm doing in um, England. So you have to play them really hard here, keep them off the bottom. It's like fishing off a like boat in the sea. It's great. And uh, like that 50 yesterday, I, like rocked. It was like savage. 
I can't wait to get back here and I haven't even gone yet. Anyway, I'm going to go and have a beer now. I'm going to like start cooking tea. I'll see if I can nail it for you tonight and he'll give you the info. I'm out in the boat with one. Got to grab the video camera. See him playing, it's deep down until it's well down. Just, just popped up to the van to get a couple of bits, right? Yeah, left me in uh, control of it all, and as you walk back in the stream, left hand rod pulled off. You have to excuse the filming, but I'm like zoomed in really tight on this and I'm holding it so it's like a bit dicey. Been playing it about five minutes now, it could be a good one. But even the 30 pounders in here go like trains. Just getting the net ready. It's a bit blowy out there at the moment. So as you pick a net up, that's blowing it, yeah. It's blowing it, it's trying to blow it back. That's not good. It's a nightmare holding this camera. I'd normally be out there with him, but I thought I'd grab the camera and get some like different footage. This has come right in close now, just got to be careful of picking up these other rods. Alright, this is a good in this one. Close now. There it is on the surface. Looks like a good in that one. Get it in there, boy. For fuck's sake, stop pissing around. It's in. <laughs> nice chunky one, isn't it? That's big bollocks. Look at the size of that in the net. It's a massive chunk that is. Nice big fish. Right, let's get it on the mat and see what it is. Back, rod screamed, rod screamed off, ran down, and uh, after about 15 20 minute flight, managed to net this fish out in the middle of the lake, just in the middle of uh, hooking and wearing the fish. Sticky, Cut. sticky baits, bloodworm rocking big time, snowman style again. What pop up do you have on this time? Uh, this was a, a, a white chocolate, sticky white chocolate. Oh, you go my way now on the whites. Swapped over now, Jim. Yeah, I think we're doing the bigger fish at the moment, doesn't it? So, just trying to get the out. Look at that mouth on it, boys and girls. Look at that. Hand in a minute, Jim, if that's okay. Minutes left on this battery. Okay. Go on in. See what she weighs. Jim, if you could do the honours. Even too much, mate. Um, 
5412. 5412? Now. Well, third or fourth day in. Not quite sure. Two um, days, you mean? Two days, sorry. What, you wishing my time away? <laughs> Got Jim, Jim over. Both had uh, 50 pound plus fish now. This fish was uh, 54 pounds. 12 Big, ounces. 12 ounce. Big chunky mirror. Sticky bloodworm doing, doing the damage. Uh, we'll be introducing it more and more. And uh, yeah, just got back from the shops. Look at that. It's on now. Side number two. Well chuffed. My nice session with, uh, with Jim. Catching uh, quite steadily now. They're well on the bay at the moment. Quite a few 50s coming out. We've had two. So uh, well chuffed. Just go and uh, put it back, I think. Put it down. Anyone's up for a chunk or two experience in the south of France at Lake Cassien, this is the man you want to see. Thanks, Jim. Just about to uh, let it go. So we're on a double celebration tonight, two 50s in less than uh, 24 hours. There you go, that's what it's all about. Pull it up for you. There you go. Hold on. 54 pounds. Let's get it back so we just 